Hey y'all, this is Coach in the Fight here. I got a special treat for you. I think I got a few treats for you. Depends on how much the Lord wants to give you. But one of the, the probably the main treat here is that we have my wife Stacy. Mm, Shalom, everyone. She is going to take over as the Hermes instructor. Am I taking over? Well, you know, I don't I don't teach Hermes as much as I should. Because he's teaching so many other classes. But so I mean, and you you volunteered for it the other day. <laughs> I was I was I was already thinking about it, and I might have been praying about it when you volunteered about it. I like Hermes. I like reading um, other books. Um, I like you know the Old Testament, New Testament as well. But I like the other books give me a little bit further understanding of those books. So. so so you've read the Old Testament, or most of it, you read the New Testament. How much How much you read? How, 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 I've read how most of the books. Well, you've got to uh, be modest, so let me answer. You've probably read, I say, 90% of the Old Testament. Yes. You probably, the only books you haven't read is books like Habakkuk and Jonah. No, you probably ain't read all the Psalms. I have not made it through all of Isaiah. That book is just so long. Yeah, six, some chapters, yeah. And, you know, there are a few others that I have not, I have started and I have not made it through they're, they're the, the hard books. Books. but you done gone through the Torah how many times? Several. Several times. You, you've gone through the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You've gone through you know the whole most of oh most of the New Testament, all of it. Most of the New Testament. But you say you like the other books. You I like, do like the other books. Like, I like Joshua. I like Thomas. I like uh, I like the other books. I do. What's What's different about those books? I think those books uh, bring out. The Old Testament, and the New Testament, um, they uh, they just bring it out. They make it. Um, they fill in the blanks. I guess that's what I would say about it. But I guess I would just say, welcome back to Hermes Academy. Welcome back to Hermes Academy. Been a while since we did some Hermes stuff. I'm gonna go finish out that commands one. The, the problem, guys, is that the Third Testament is out and people want to hear about the Third Testament. They, when I went back to start doing the Hermes, uh, the classes on commands, nobody would look at them. Everybody started looking at the old, you know, stuff. And I want to get through the, the Third Testament, too. I've, I've dabbled in a few chapters, but I want to start at chapter one, verse one from that. So you will take over as Hermes or we'll work together. We'll see what the Lord decides to do. But we're going to do similar to today. Right, we're st starting with the third book of Hermes, Semitude 1. And in this book, we're going to see how this third book, uh, the first chapter of Semitude, echoes um, Matthew 6, verse, really? verse 19 through 21 and 33. Oh, we're going to have to pull that up, too. Should I pull it up now, or you want to go right into Hermes? How you want to do it? Let's go into Hermes, and then um, I think you'll see... Okay. How it how it um coincide uh -oh. with it perfectly. Uh oh y'all, the teacher about to become the student. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. All right, know. you you got your own book. You got your own book. I do. Well you got you know, my book. Right. Oh, we're torn together book. Them books they they all split in half, guys. You got one that's split in half. I can do a I, I think I did a class on how to tape them back together. But um all right, so I'm I got the computer. I'll be looking over here, you looking over there, I'll try to follow along. See what you go. Okay, so we'll start with um similar to one. Right. And and before you jump in, I don't know if you read what this is about, it says that seeing we have no abiding city in this world, we ought to look after that which is to come. You want me to huh? and also we should remind the people that um, to go back and look at, um, listen to the commands as well as the visions, but the commands more so because this is the same angel of repentance that's talking in command. It's the same one that is um, talking with Hermes in Semitude. So if they haven't looked at that class, they might want to refresh themselves. All right. On that as well. So and so this is the third part of the book of the Shepherd of Hermes. You have, like she said, you have visions first and then commands, and she's right. It's very important to go back and look at that. All right. Um, do you want me to read the verse for you or what yeah, you want? Okay, verse one. And he said unto me, 
ye know that ye who are the servants of the Lord live here as in a pilgrimage for your city is far off from this city in this first verse the, um, the angel of repentance is telling Hermes that basically this is not our home right and, and we hear that often what do, what do they mean by that? I mean, we well, a lot of people say this ain't our home. We don't live here, you know. Um, because we um. I mean, it's the same people that be talking about how we, we we can't take it with us, right? Right, because this is as you would say, this is like a, um, like a holding, like, like a, well, place that we come to. Well, yeah, it's a it's a it's a it's a period of our evolution being here on on the planet. You know, you read in the Third Testament that being here, you know, is just a transition point. We're this is not our home, and you know, we're we're planning on going somewhere else. Everybody knows we're leaving. I think I believe I heard you say this is a place where we come to learn. Well, we learn about materialism. We learn about um, third dimensional stuff. We learn to. We learn about spiritualism. We learn, we learn what's really important here in this kind of proven ground. And, you know, we've all been here, we, you know, for a while and we learn and then we come to a certain level of maturity, hopefully, and then we can move on. Right. This is not our final, final place of habitation, I guess. Right. Let's say. Okay. Right. If, therefore, ye know your city in which ye are, are to dwell, why do ye here by estates and provide yourself with delicacies and stately buildings and superfluous houses? For he that provides himself these things in this city does not think of returning into his own city. I think that is saying that if we know that this is not our final habitation, if we know that this is not our final place, why are we putting everything that we have, everything that we got into this place? Why are we focusing on it? Why are we focused on this place? You know, why are we focused on uh, the big mansions, the big, you know, the big luxury cars, the big luxury homes and all of that stuff if um, this is not our, our, our final place? All right. Okay. All right. So you use that word superfluous. But my, let's see. Let's see what happens. I think I can hit the synonym, but it look like they spelled somebody spelled it wrong. I don't know. Um, well, it's what what we're looking at, guys, is the the text from the William Wake edition. I should have showed you that first. How we and I may do that, or at least give you a link. But we're looking at a translation, a PDF file that we found on the web for the William Wake. It was the William Wake edition which is the same one that comes out of the Lost Books of the Bible and the Forgotten Books of Eden. Now, if you're online in some other places, you may find it, you know, different versions. We have introductory classes. I think you did an introductory on this, didn't you? I think so. And it's posted, ain't it? So we'll link to that, to your introduction, where you go into great detail. You remember that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. But, um, let's see, I guess I got to change the spelling of the word. Yeah. You got to put an E in there. And then I got, then, what? The book has an E in it? Yes. Why this PDF file? Oh, oh. Uh, long as we, long, well, you, you, you got the hardcover book, so you make sure this is right. A lot of guys, I pulled this down off the web somewhere. But it says uh, extra, surplus, redundant, unnecessary, unessential, unexcessive, unneeded, or needless, or the sentence. So, so it said, why are we buying needless houses? Okay. Now, I go another word. But it so, seems like you're going to let me finish the whole verse. You don't want to stop in the middle because I can, I can read it a little faster. It's up to you. Um, well, if you, I mean, if you, if you want to jump in in the middle of the verse. No, I don't. Okay, well, one verse at a time. O oh, foolish and doubtful and wretched man, who understandeth not that all these things belong to other men and are under the power of another. For the Lord of this city saith unto thee, either obey my laws or depart out of my city uh taking that for the lord of this city said unto thee either obey my laws or depart out of this city well i mean i'm thinking of um the law 
like man's law or, or the Bible law? I'm thinking of the Bible law. Huh? That, do you, know, do you see what I'm saying? Either take. Well, either. yeah, you have, you have laws that you have to, uh, you have to, but you have to pay taxes. You have to, um, what other laws is it that, that he may be that, well, there are a lot of laws, but what he's saying is that some of these, some of the laws that man has are going to contradict some of the laws that the Bible has. And he's saying, in this case, like, I'm trying to think of one where the guy's going to tell you to leave his city. Um, well, in other places, you know, they had him to, to participate in all of those feasts and stuff, which is really the essence of what he's talking about here. He's going to have you to do stuff to break the commandments. Well, None of none of man's laws. I can't. I can't think of any man, any of man's laws that will force you to break the Lord's commandments, except some mark of the beast kind of stuff. That ain't happening. I can't think of any either. So what is he talking about here then? For the Lord of this city saith unto thee, I don't obey my laws or depart out of my city. He says, O foolish and doubtful and wretched man, who understandest not that all these things belong to other men, and are under the power of another. He's talking what what he's talking about there is they're they're talking about the riches. All right. of these riches, all of these big superfluous houses, all of this neat stuff belongs to the um to other men and under the power of another. For the Lord of this city said unto thee, Either obey my laws or depart out of my city. So I think he's saying that either you have the choice of doing this, he's because later on in the verse he's he's explaining it said, I guess is when you hear the recording, it makes it sounds as if he's saying, what if the Lord of this city tells you to do something and it's contrary against Yah's laws, will you obey man's law or will you obey Yah's law? Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. So he's saying either, you know, Obey these laws or move out of my city. Okay. And, and he said, what if you get that choice? Okay, verse 4 says, Wherefore, therefore, shalt thou do who art subject to a law in thine own city? Hence, thou... Let, for, let me say this. He's saying that you are subject to Yah's law. Okay. Wherefore, thou shalt do... Well, what... What, what therefore yeah. shalt thou do who art subject to a law in thine own okay, thine own city is okay. So the city that we well, this ain't this he said that this is not our city, but we have another city. Right. Over here we got these one laws and, and that we go by over here, but what if the guy says, Hey, do my laws or leave, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. you know? It's very it's confusing the way that they have it written, but yeah. Well you're doing a good job of explaining. It says, Canst thou for thy estate or for any of those things which thou hast provided, deny thy law. But if thou shalt deny it, and will afterwards return into thy own city, thou shalt not be received, but shall be excluded thence. Okay, let's put let's put take some of the guys out and put you in it. What therefore shall you do who are subject to a law in your own city? Can thou for your estate or for any of those things which you have you has provided deny your law? But if you shall deny it and will afterwards return it to your own city, thou shalt not be received, thou shalt be excluded. Saying. He's saying that if you deny the law of your city and take man's law, you can are you gonna to try to come back into your city? He's saying you're not gonna be able to come back, you're not gonna be received. Right. Oh, okay, so we could mess up over here. We could do, we could do, in, in playing around in this city, folk like you said, focusing on this city, we could actually do something that could hurt our residents in the other city, or when we try to go home. It seems as if that's what he's saying. Okay. What do you think? Yeah, that's what he's saying. He's saying, he's saying, can Thou for thy estate or for any of those things which thou hast provided, deny thy law. Meaning, go with the taxes thing. Where do you get the money from to pay taxes if you are a servant of the Lord? If you are a servant of the Most High 
And he says you work for him 24 hours a day, yet you want this luxurious house and this car. Okay, so now here it is, you know, tax time. You're gone all year. You've been, you know, riding on regal, eagle's wings with, you know, with the Lord. And all of a sudden, these guys say, you owe them $11 to pay for this house. Where are you going to get this money to pay the taxes from? You have to do something, right? You have to take action. Right. Okay, now, what if the, the, the job that you have for the Lord requires that you not do that something? Like, meaning you can't just go, you know, get a job and make 11 the money. Or you can't just go borrow the money, or you can't just go steal the money, or you can't just, you know, go do this because that would be in violation of the calling that's on your particular life. You can understand it would make you break, you know what I'm right. saying? Like if you are TD Jakey or whatever, and all of a sudden you got to come and do something that, that's, that you were in disagreement with for the sake of the law. Well, they may not let you back on a television show. You may right. you may mess up. Right. And that's what he's you know, that's what he's trying to say here is that don't let your house and your car get you in trouble. Right. This ain't your old kingdom. You don't live here. You know, this this don't get in trouble over your house or your car and suffer the kingdom. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Five. See therefore that like a man in another country thou procure no more to thyself than what is necessary and efficient for thee and be ready that when God or Lord that when the God or Lord of this city shall drive thee out of it thou mayest oppose his law and go into thine own city where thou mayest with all cheerfulness live according to thine own law with no wrong. I don't, what do we need all of this stuff for? Because. Why do we need all this stuff? Because you are a material person. Because you're on this planet. You got that, you got to have somewhere, you got to have clothes on your back, you got to have a house, you got to have, you know, food, uh, shoes on your feet, you got to have food for your plate, you got to have a plate, you got to have a chair, you got to have a spoon, you got what you're going to do. But we have, but why do we have to have the Gucci shoes and the Michael Kors purse and the um, the the red bottom shoes and the you know the mansion and the yacht and the well, let me tell you the go back to nineteen I'm gonna say about nineteen eighty one. We was on the basketball court and we was playing basketball hard as we could in our pro kids and our converses and, you know, green and cat. And then all of a sudden, here come my cousin, who done been up in New York City come, for all summer long, come in here with these Michael Jordans on his feet. And, you know what I'm saying? All of a sudden, the game changes. Everybody's focused on these Michael Jordans. And so what then happens? After 1981, people start picking on each other. They start picking on you as kids. Remember that? Right. And so those same people who were picking on you as kids, not only are they doing okay and, you know, got the, the stuff, but the ones of us who truly got hurt, we got us some damn money now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we ain't worried about my mama. My mama ain't got to buy me now pro kid now. You know what I'm saying? I got shoes five hundred dollars up under that bed. And my mama ain't gotta buy me no more pro kids. And so here we are, you know what I'm saying? When when somebody get ready to pick on it, no, we don't get picked on no more. Because, you know, uh -uh. I got the Gucci stuff just like you do. And so that is just it. We are still children getting picked on as if we're, you know, in the bag on fifth grade. When you don't come out with your stuff, we, we may be fifty years old, but we still acting like we five. So it makes us feel better as a person to uh, to have the the name brand uh, more expensive stuff. Yeah, it, it's just it is is not expensive because if you can get a knockoff that look just like the real one and can nobody ever ever never tell, you would pay five dollars for that thing. There's no way you'd go pay five hundred dollars for a bag that you could absolutely get the exact same one that nobody guarantees it. Y'all say I, I tell you what, if they could tell that it's fake, 
I'll buy you a new, I'll give you this one right here, which is absolutely real. He's like, okay, I'll pay five dollars just for that chance. He's walking around holding up in people's face. Can you tell this fake? No, you can't tell this fake. Well, okay. You go buy him about ten more. You know what I'm saying? You give him out his Christmas gift. Okay, and, it says, and it says, and be ready that when the God or Lord of this city shall drive thee out of it, thou mayest oppose his law and go into thy own city. So those are matter of fact state uh, words, when and shall. Yeah, it's going to happen. That's the thing about the tribulation period, but they call it Jacob's trouble, is that the Antichrist, when he rises up, he's going to make Jacob do stuff that Jacob ain't supposed to do. The mark of the beast, worship the, the image of the beast, it, the, all of that stuff is forbidden by our father. It's forbidden by our Old Testament. So we're going to get to the point where they're going to say, either you're going to do this stuff or you're not going to be able to buy or sell. Well, where are you going to get them taxes from now? Where are you going to get the tax money to pay for the, you know, where are you going to get the food? Where are you going to get the, the, the car payment? Where are you going to get the house note? Where are you going to get the Gucci shoes from? Where are you going to get the money for this? Where are you going to get the money for that? And so it's going to boil down to a choice. The lady said, you know, people are having visions where they are being, you know, held at, you know, life or death situation on whether they're, they're going to accept the mark of the beast or not. And that's that's what the scripture says. You're not going to you you are going to be forced to get it in one way or the other. Not like with a gunpoint jabbed it in your hand, but you know, when you are a single mom with all these little babies to feed, nobody around to help you. Your mama can't help you. Your daddy can't help you because they can't even help themselves. There's nobody reaching down to help you except the government, who says, sign this document. You know, let me prick your finger, you know, or, or whatever. Get in this get in this room over here. What what other choice are you going to do? You have no education on, on what the scripture says, the promises of the scripture, or how to attain those, those promises. So what are you going to do? You have no choice. You have no choice. Hmm. Hmm. So what does it say there? He says, um that that man what does he say procure no more to thyself than is necessary so that when so that you so if so he's what is he saying he's saying if you only have the minimum stuff then when it's time to go you can go quick remember the lady you know said that you know her shoes she she had so many shoes that she had to pack in bags or whatever right yeah i think that's what he's saying when it's time to go that you don't have to be uh worried about this stuff yeah, remember when we, when we left Chattanooga, we had the biggest U-Haul truck, the U-Haul rent, and we couldn't even get half the stuff in it. Remember that? Right. Mm -hmm. We couldn't even get half the stuff in it. Mm -hmm. And when we got down here to the house, the truck was bigger than the house that we were going to put that stuff in. Remember that? Right. Right. The truck was bigger than the storage house that we had. To put it in, right? Right. And then the house that we live in now, not the storage house, the house, the trailer, yeah, the, the mobile trailer. home. Yeah, the when we rolled the mobile home up to the trailer, I'm, I'm, I'm using a little bit of hyperbole, but when we rolled that big old truck up to the trailer, remember Aunt Susie said the truck is bigger than the trailer. Right, right. I'm saying that even when the stuff we put in the trailer, and then when we bought it down, we had actually had two trailers to put it in. Two mobile homes. Yeah, two mobile homes to put it in. Two single wives. <laughs> Take heed, therefore, ye that serve God, and have him in your hearts. Work ye the works of God, being mindful both of his commands and of his promises, which he has promised, and be assured that he will make them good unto you, if ye shall keep his commandments. So this is telling us is to do what the Lord is telling us to do, to be, 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 be mindful of the things that he's told us to do and that he will he will work it out for us yeah yeah well, i believe you're right and then what 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 what, what, what do you think about as far as they said if you shall keep his commandments he said look he used the words commands too being mindful of both his commands and then he jumps down there and says if you shall keep his commandments well i think the commands the commands the com commandments, the laws, the statutes, the ordinances, the judgments, all those things, is that what he, he's talking about? Well, kind of, but, but look here, he says, being mindful of my commands. Now, we know that the that they, they second 
uh, part of his book is called commands, right? Right. And so that's what he's talking about, being mindful of his commands. But then in, he's called and keep his commandments. The commandments, that's Exodus 20. Right. So he's talking about both of them, the, the commands and the commandments. Yeah. Commands and his promises, which he has promised. And um, if you shall keep my commandments, yes. So you have to keep in mind of the commands and of the promises. See, if you forget what the promises are, if you don't, or if you don't know what the promises are, what's the problem? What do you probably think is the problem with that? If you don't know what the promises are. If you don't have to know what the promises are, you have, I guess, nothing to look forward to? Or oh, you're you... going to look forward to something. You're going to make it up. Think about right. it. Well, if you don't know what the promises are, what are you going to do? You're going to make up promises to fit what you want us to say. Yeah, you, what else do you, I mean, think about it. I mean, I know I, I kind of coached you into that answer, but what else are you going to do? If you don't know what the promises are, do you just not just not worry about any problem? Well, I guess that's the other choice. Well, that's what you said, ain't it? Just don't worry about it. Just forget about the promises. Right. This, and so you have a group of people that who are, like you say, that are um, unaware that there even should be any promises. And so they ain't, they ain't thinking about y'all at all. They like, whatever, man. Why would I even read the Bible? Why would I go down there with them folks? Why, why would I? They look at you with this weird, you know, look on their face and say, why, why? Yeah. What I think somebody asked you, uh, was that uh, cousin of ours asked you what? Um, what do I get out of? Yeah, what do you get out of? Yeah, it's like what would you do? So if you don't know if you so if you don't know that there are pro promises, then you're in that boat. But then if you know that there are promises, but you're not aware of them, mm -hmm. well, if you like, well, then you kind of make it up. Was, you know, my my answer was actually not as good as yours, but that's what you do. You make it up. You like, you know. Well, uh, uh, well, uh, he's supposed. To, I'm supposed to have the Gucci, you know, bag. I'm supposed to have the Lexus. I'm not supposed to be riding around, you know, with an old, you know, a car. You know, I'm supposed not supposed to look like that. This, my Lord provides me with this. Oh, well, another one that uh, we often get is uh, the Lord's not going to let anything happen to to those who really love Him. Yeah, that's a made up promise. Mm -hmm. That's a made up promise because you remember he said there's plenty of people going to be saying, Lord, Lord, and. and you know what? Uh, often, and this is off the subject, what often comes to mind, and I was thinking about the other day, where people say, Well, the Lord ain't going to let nothing uh, bad happen to me because, uh, you know, I love him and I pray and all that. But I, th I think about, you know, his disciples that was martyred. Yeah. And Paul that was uh, hung and, and all the ones that Paul was stopped. hung. I don't know. Was Paul hung? Oh, was I thought Paul's you was about to tell head, me something. Paul, his head was his head was cut off or something like that, wasn't it? No, oh, Paul, I don't know. I think it's Paul. Um, not not sorry, you might want to edit there. Um if we're gonna find out. This is the information aid. Hey, you can look stuff up, man. But um all his disciples that were martyred and stoned and and you know in prison for years and years and years and you telling me that the Lord is not gonna let anything happen to you. Uh, and these people served him both night and day. Yeah, John was on Patmos Island. Don't nobody know what happened. He in prison, right here in prison, writing Revelations. And you think you ain't supposed to give up your lectures? <laughs> Alrighty. Yeah, I got it. Death. The New Testament does not say when or how Paul died. According to the Acts of Paul, Nero condemned Paul to death by. Decapitation. Well, we know no, John the Baptist. Right. According to the Acts of Paul. Oh, the Acts of Paul. Oh, okay. It's a whole nother book. I thought he said Acts, and then but he said Acts of Paul. So what was you? I'm sorry. What did you say? Well, I was thinking about John the Baptist. He was decapitated. Right. Yeah. So you was right. He was. He was his head was cut off. That and you can find that in a whole nother book called the Acts of Paul. I'm not sure where that book is located. I mean, it's probably on that shelf up there somewhere, but you know, which volume is in, I don't know. Tertullian, I know where that one is at. Tertullian, in his prescription against heretics in 200 AD, writes that Paul had a similar death to that of John the Baptist. 
But was it bad? Did you read that there or you read it? I think I might, I might have read it somewhere. I'm sure I read it somewhere. Other than right here while I, before I got to Okay. Yeah. You're so smart. See, y'all, this is your new Hermes instructor, guy. Uh, we ain't, she ain't playing. Uh, she ain't playing. You know what I mean? She teaches. She teaching teachers. You know what I mean? She got a lot to offer. Mm -hmm. you know, so y'all get some encouraging words in the comments. Keep it going. You know what I mean? Let's do this thing. All right, we're going to get back. We're almost finished. Yeah. That's four more. Somewhere. Are we on seven? Seven. <laughs> Instead, therefore, of the possessions that ye would otherwise purchase, redeem those that are in want from their necessities. As everyone is able, justify the widows, judge the cause of the fatherless, and spend your riches and your wealth in such works as these. I think that's self-explanatory. Where you're um, instead of taking your money and buying, uh, you know, ten Louis Vuitton purses, you know, take it and you know, maybe uh, invite an older person over to dinner, or um, you know, take your money and feed, you know, feed the homeless, or you know, just do something for. Uh, the people who aren't able to do things, you know that aren't able to do things for themselves. I'm trying to think of a personal example, you know, and I'm, I'm going back in my history. I'm going all the way back to the military. You remember when I was buying all of them, uh, what were them things? Them cards, them baseball cards. I, would, I think I had a Sam's Club account just so I can go in there and buy them big boxes of baseball cards. You remember that? I don't remember you Baseball and football card. Remember the cards? I even brought them down here. Remember, and me and yeah, your brothers. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Me and your Yeah, yeah. And baseball cards. I do remember that. And the white boxes. The white boxes of cards. We had right. stacked boxes and boxes. Remember we put them cards in a safety deposit box. Right. I do remember that. And Superman cards and all of that stuff. Superman comic books. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought it was going to be a value. Mm -hmm. I thought, I thought you know, you know, I didn't really care about them. I just thought, you know, it was an easy way. It just makes sense. You know what I'm saying? I buy a thousand cards. One of these cars in here gonna be of value, so just put the whole box in the daggone thing. Wait ten years, pull it out, let's see what we got. You know what I mean? Right. But you know that. Why, what would have happened? How would my life have been different if I'd have took that same fifteen dollars, you know, that I was just spending on that box that week, and just gave it to the guy outside, you know, asking for money, or gave it to the church, or gave it to the widow lady or the orphan kid bought somebody some ice cream or something so yeah take the um take those possessions that you would otherwise purchase and deem those for those that are in want right how how valuable are those cards really going to be if you think about it mm. i mean <laughs> the whole bank is probably going to be worthless here in a few years for this end has god enriched you that ye might fulfill these kind of services it is much better to do this than to buy lands or houses because all such things shall perish with the present time so he's saying that this is the reason that he gives people um riches it's not just for you to be you know uh, to have riches. yeah strutting and people to be dotty over you and stuff like that you know it's for it's for you to do good with it right and we so we have but we have free will and we can do what we want to do with it, right? Yeah. It's just not meant for, you know, it's not meant to do that, but, you know, that's the problem is that we have free will, and so you give me, I mean, it's like right now, if you were to give me, you know, a wad or whatever, what am I really going to do with it? Am I really, if you're going to give me a million dollars, of course, I come up with all of these, you know, um, good ideas, I'm, I lack of a better word, you know, I'm going to get into the church, you know, more. Uh, pay off all my mama's bills, and then, you know what I mean. But when you actually put it down on the table, what, you know what you actually gonna do with it? Right. I think I was listening to the Third Testament last night or this morning, where it was saying how the free will is used sometimes is used against the Lord. Your free will is always there. Yeah. Use it against the Lord. Something that He gave to us, we use it against Him. Always. Yeah, you're right. We use it against Him 
I mean, that, that's exactly. I mean, it's like it's like Eve had free will to to you know, and Adam had free will to to eat of the the, the fruit that they weren't supposed to eat of. And yeah, from from the first day, we've always used free free will to get ourselves in trouble. But he does say that this stuff will perish. It is definitely going to perish. So, you know. Talking about tribulation. Talking about tribulation. Right. People don't understand that. This stuff about to get messed up. I mean, take a mental picture of it. And I say take a mental picture of it because your camera going to be broke. <laughs> you ain't going to have no photo album to look at. <laughs> take a mental picture of it. Can, we about to get naked here in a, few, in a little while. Verse 9 says, But when ye shall, but what ye shall do for the name of the Lord, ye shall find in your city. And ye shall have joy without sadness or fear. Wherefore, covet not the riches of the heathen, for they are destructive to the servants of God. They are. They are. Every time funds come into our our hands we end up doing things otherwise than what we should we don't take it and buy the seed that we need or buy a part to fix the what's the name a part to fix or pay tithes or uh, give to the widow or we take it and we do other things for it that next week you're like what did I do with that money mm -hmm. or what did you know where did this here go we do things that are destructive can you consider them destructive but you know you buy cookies and candy and cakes and all that other stuff that stuff is not healthy for you when you have uh you know the well, we do homemade stuff here. there's a lot more than just you know food stuff there's magazines there's um you know booze now i mean it's all kinds of stuff it's the money itself the cash itself that causes the problem that's where you ought to be thinking about it. You say, well, see, because you're sitting here now and you're not worried about anything that's going to harm you. But, you know what I'm saying, maybe it's because you ain't got no money. You know what I'm saying? If you had a couple of thousand dollars to come into your hands all of a sudden, where would you be tomorrow? You know, will you be buying, you know, more chocolate than you're supposed to be eating? You know? The money itself, you got to understand that it has images on it and it has... Um, curses on it. There's you know a lot of I don't know. Um, maybe I shouldn't we'll say that for another class. Moving on. Or where are we at? But trade with your own riches which ye possess, by which ye may attain unto everlasting joy. Now what would these riches be he's talking about? Let's go back up there. What was the other riches? The other riches were number nine. Wherefore covet not the riches of the heathen, for they are destructive to the servants of Yah. And then on seven it says, Spend your riches and your wealth in such work as these. This boy is justifying the widows just because of the front fatherless. Okay. So when it says, But trade with your own riches, then those own riches could be the only the riches you got from him, right? If they're not the riches, right. if you're not the, if it's not the riches of the heathen, then it's the riches riches of the saints. Right. So what are the riches of the saints? I think teaching could it be teaching? Yeah. Could it be sharing, yeah. uh, witnessing? Could yeah. it be sharing God's word? Um, by which you may attain unto everlasting joy. Well, there's more than more than that. There's more riches than that. So that's what we were talking about earlier. If you don't know what the promises are, you don't know what the blessings are. Yeah. You don't know what you got. If you don't know what if you don't know what he told you he was gonna give you, how do you know when you got it? Mm -hmm. You don't know. It's 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 peace. It's crops that grow. It's children that are healthy. Right. It's livestock that produce. It's the riches that we have is they're they're there. And not just some, you know, just believe. No, you know what I'm saying? I'll put my riches up against anybody's riches any day. You know what I'm saying? You come on and talk that junk all you want to. You know, we can play big bank, take little bank. You know what I mean? 
I can tell you some riches they're just different it's just not you know I might have to explain them to you a little bit you know what I'm saying this is 12 acres of land and um there is value there but you know I mean it's, it's, we have so he's saying but you know and that's a bad example because you know the guy's going well that's material thing it ain't really yours we just talked about a few minutes ago that this ain't our land you know you're gonna come up they're gonna ask you for that tax money and you ain't I mean that tax money you ain't gonna be able to pay it or whatever but we can grow crops here. You know, our grocery store is, you know what I'm saying, out in the woods. You know what I'm saying? We get our snacks out in the backyard. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? The kids, when they want to go play, you know, you know, when they want some entertainment, we ain't got to go to Wally World. I mean, or, you know, Wild Kingdom. We got, we got Wild Kingdom back there. You know what I'm saying? Let me be quiet for a minute. You can hear it. It's just different. It's just different. It's different. Mm -hmm. And so he's saying trade with your own riches. Which includes Bible knowledge and, you know, like you said, love and, you know, that kind of thing, too. Okay, this is the last one, number 11. And do not commit adultery, nor touch any other man's wife, nor desire her, but covet that which is thine own business, and thou shalt be saved. Now, that one was a kind of like something that was like a through a wrench in there. Where did that come from? <laughs> Where did it come from? <laughs> It's like we was going down one way, and all of a sudden, yeah. it's like, let me slide I'm like, this. Like, is one. there like a something wrong that would happen in the translation or something? That's why I stuck this verse in. Right. Is it in your book too? You better check it. It is in my book. All right, she got the hardcover book. I got an old word document. I can change stuff up in here if I wanted to. Don't want to. And do not commit adultery. Not touch any other man's wife. Not desire her, but covet that which is your thy own business, and thou shalt be saved. Well, let's go back over here. By, uh, it says, uh, but trade with your own riches and do not commit adultery. Mm -hmm. Trade with your own riches, which you possess, mm -hmm. but do not commit adultery. Yeah, because, okay, so let's come down here. Let's look at it a little closer. Nor touch any other man's wife, nor desire her, but of that which is not on business, and that's what he said. Mm -hmm. The, uh, now, adultery it could be talking about scripture, Yah. Mm -hmm. It could be talking about Yah. But then when it throws in, not touch any other man's wife, not desire her, that kind of thing. Like it would, would just say, and do not commit adultery, but covet that which is one's own business, and thou shalt be saved. Uh, I don't do know. you think he's trying to trying to somehow tie in committing adultery with your own land, maybe? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, I mean, it's, it, it, remember the title of this section. Let's see. We have no abiding city in this world. We ought to look after that which is to come. So what does that have to do with committing adultery? You know what I mean? You trading on somebody else's property. You, you know what I mean? You like what they say. You, you uh, what, is, what, is, what did uh, Samson say? You clown with my heifer. <laughs> right. Right. So let's see how this ties in. This first book ties in with Matthew 6. Yeah, we're going to go to Matthew 6. Let's go to Matthew 6, verse 19. And I think you'll see it very quickly. I think you will you'll pick it up. I don't know. I'm learning some stuff today. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna let you read it. Lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth where moth and rust does corrupt, nor where thieves break through, nor steal. I think you absolutely right. And 20 goes on to say, let's read 20 and 21 oh. as well. Oh, is that it? Mm -hmm. Let me bump them up on that. It says, Matthew 6, 19 says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, nor moth and rust does corrupt, nor where thieves break through the steel, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust does corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. 
For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Okay, let's go to number 33 as well. 633. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Well, I believe you're right. I can see that. So wait, what do you think? I think when he says that, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, that's what he's talking about going over here in seven, 7 where it says instead therefore of the possessions that you would otherwise purchase redeem those things that are in want from their necessities as everyone is able justify the will of just to cause the father to spend your riches and your wealth in such works as these what do you think instead therefore instead therefore of the possessions that you would otherwise purchase being those that are in want and from their necessities. Okay, what what is that? The um, I believe it's also it lay not up for yourselves treasures treasure. in heaven, and where moth and rust is corrupt, where right? the thieves do not break through and steal. That's a good find, stay. That's that's like the same verse, huh? All right. Um, I think what well, in close I would just say to um just to go back and um to read to get a good reading of uh visions, get a good listen to of visions and commands and um I guess just join us for similitudes too. Understand, join us for similitudes too.